The nesting season brings renewal to one of Earth's most loved creatures, birds. No animals have inspired through history man's fancy and imagination like this colorful and capable group. Born on wings, they travel the world's skies, unbound by barriers of water and mountains and deserts. Riding winds, they ignore time while yet defining annual seasons through migration. Beyond beauty, birds bless the earth with song. No wonder they fascinate us. Of all animals, they are perhaps least limited. And curiously, their lives begin with eggs. This unlikely beginning has always drawn attention for its strange difference from live birth. In tiny and brittle packages, birds form in shelled bundles requiring only weeks to forge new life and independence. And they do so in hasty shelters of amazing diversity, some minimal, requiring little or no work, and others built with artistry and skill seemingly impossible through beak and claw. It's all part of the wonder of birds. For most birds, nesting is a warm weather venture. It begins in spring when growth is lavish and food is plentiful. But journey and preparation start early. Geese, famed travelers that push toward Arctic nesting sites, are on the move by midwinter. And for those observers attuned to birds, this subtle beginning hints at what is to come. The sun strikes northward and the early birds go to work. Some raptors brave winter rigors to start their nests early. Their diets, comprised of larger, warm-blooded prey, make early nesting an important advantage. To feed their voracious young, it's easier to hunt in winter's sparse vegetation than later when lush growth helps to hide their prey. Great horned owls are on their bulky platform, sometimes even in January. Eagles follow quickly behind, producing eggs in February. Early nesting has its disadvantages. Parent raptors must protect their eggs and young through late winter storms. But the trade-off is easier hunting to feed their young. And this jump starts the young birds themselves, providing those like barred owl fledglings a steady food supply from their parents and a chance to perfect their own hunting skills before the summer jungle appears. Late winter storms are especially hard on smaller birds that nest early, since they're more vulnerable to cold, and the insects they rely on for food become totally inactive. Meanwhile, other birds are moving. Ducks dressed in their finest breeding colors court and seek mates even as they head for their nesting areas. Late February and early March are good times to watch impressive courtship flights, easy to see due to the birds' large sizes and predictable occupation of shallow marshes. These flights are comprised of an unmated female with groups of suitors who follow her every move. They occur in many species, but none more dazzling than with the handsome pintails, agile and sometimes known as the greyhounds of the air. Chases occur frequently throughout the day punctuated by dance tricks on the water where males try to convince the females that they are the one. Once pairing occurs, the courtship rituals move on through the population. Likewise, large birds like sandhill cranes seek mates through elaborate courtship dances. These comical, almost silly expressions include leaping high in the air, throwing corn stalks or handy vegetation, and calling to arouse response. Nebraska's Platte River area is an important staging ground on the spring crane migration 
and much bonding and pairing is accomplished there. By the time arctic nesting grounds are reached, the birds are mated and ready to nest. Many large bird species mate for life and the male attends the female throughout the nesting season. But with other species, it's just a one-night stand. These include well-known dancers like greater and lesser prairie chickens. These males have a unique strategy. Establish a local dance floor known as a lek. Try for the best spot center stage secured through daily fights and skirmishes and then show off their best moves while booming or calling through inflated vocal sacs to attract hen prairie chickens. These haunting sounds can be heard from up to a mile away. Hens arrive at dawn sorting through the mails like someone shopping for shoes at the mall. When impressed, they mate. Otherwise, the males have nothing to do with nesting and raising young prairie chickens. Lucking continues daily until nesting season is finished for the year. Wild turkeys are known for their more solitary calls and displays. Gobbles ring throughout morning woods in good turkey habitat, and tom turkeys constantly move and display to attract area hens. They don't employ leks, but rather fly down from roost trees and wander through the habitat, gobbling and strutting. When a hen shows interest, the colorful gobbler turns and does his best to show off fiery colors. A hen may mate many times through the season, often producing large clutches of up to 15 eggs or more. But aside from mating, she has no contact with males of her species. Smaller birds that nest in middle latitudes usually do things differently. Though each has a courtship strategy, it usually begins with males arriving early on nesting grounds to establish territories. Dominant and aggressive birds often fight for the best locations, which have much to do with securing a mate when females arrive later. These fights, normally little more than scuffles, can be intense and even deadly. Once a male bird secures a nesting territory, he may sing to attract a mate. Dawn is a beautiful and quiet time to listen for bird songs, though male singing occurs throughout the day. The female, attracted to song, checks out the nesting digs. If she likes the whole deal, pairing occurs and nest building quickly follows. Not all male birds sing as a normal part of courtship. Killdeers push into middle latitudes by early March, males first, to establish breeding territories in prime locations near water. Females arrive soon, and at first, courtship is little more than tolerance on the territory. Interloping males who try to challenge are quickly driven away. As a pair familiarizes, they go through courtship rituals. Scraping is an enactment of building a ground nest. This show often bonds the birds and mating occurs. Nesting begins nearby with little fanfare. Killdeers build sparse ground nests, slight depressions with few or no amenities. Egg camouflage helps protect the nest when parents are feeding. However, both sexes share duties incubating and caring for young, so the nest is seldom unattended. Many birds are quite punctual about their spring return to the nesting grounds. Turkey vultures, some returning from wintering grounds as far as South America, usually appear in South Central Kansas within a day or two of March 17th. At first, they congregate in certain areas to feed and recover from travel. 
During this time, many vultures may roost together. Then they gradually disperse to individual nesting territories. Turkey vultures seldom build a nest at all. If they can find an abandoned shed, barn, or cave, they lay their eggs directly on the floor. No sweat. A parent provides regurgitated food eaten from road kills, and the youngsters, alone for long periods of time unattended, eat whenever they wish. At the other end of the spectrum are the beautiful and complicated nests of Orioles. The Baltimore Oriole waits until summer leaves form dense foliage to help hide the nest at the end of a hanging branch. Like nearly all birds, they use their nest but once. Even so, they build deep and tight baskets that can survive nature's rigors for several years. To watch them weave is a thing of beauty. Somehow, among the thousands of fibers and strands, they know how to pull each one, in and out, out and in, to tighten the hole into a safe and tidy structure. Birds are resourceful when gathering nest materials. Fishing line, twine, horsehair, cellophane, mud, paper, all may be incorporated when building a nest. This catbird nest illustrates. Usually, plenty of natural matter is available. But some birds are not above pirating a previous nest. Scissor-tail flycatchers, not known for this behavior, have been caught in the act. An old nest is dismantled while its particular colorful twines appear in a new nest under construction a short distance away. Here, a female is seen stripping fibers from a nest recently destroyed by predation to help build a follow-up nest just 80 yards away. Cliff swallows build unusual mud nests. After a rain and in the right kind of soil, these colony nesters gather at mud holes to mine mud pellets, which are taken back to the nest and sculpted into an urn-shaped tube. The mud dries to form hard nest chambers, which are then lined with soft materials and used to raise young. Like many nests, these can take a week or more of hard work to construct. In colony nesting situations, one bird must stay with the nest site to avoid losing it to a thief. Great egrets make a good example. The female stays on site all day long, while the male brings nest sticks and offers them in a ritualized manner. The female then incorporates the item while the male flies off for another load. Often, egret nests are located just a few feet apart, and a single tree may have dozens of nests of various egret species. Bird nests are found in many places. Some nest at ground level or below. Some nest in shrubs and tree limbs. Some nest in cavities in living or dead trees. Some nest under bridges, in buildings, or in an assortment of odd man-made niches. And some nest in boxes built especially for their use. Not always are these locations ideal, though they might appear so at the start. When a sparrow chose the open ends of metal tubing on an outdoors basketball goal, it seemed a perfect place to escape rain and weather. So she built her nest inside, only to lose her young when summer sun heated the metal to scorching temperatures, killing her nestlings. The nesting season is a busy time. Usually it takes a week or more to construct a nest. And sometimes, especially with young first-time birds, mistakes are made. 
This robin worked for five days before apparently deciding her work had inadequate support. As the nest listed during construction, she eventually abandoned it never to return. And it soon fell out of the tree. At nest completion, egg laying begins. Many kinds of birds lay an egg a day, usually in the morning, until the clutch is complete. Birds tend to lay typical numbers of eggs that fall within a given range for the species. For instance, killdeers usually lay four eggs per nest, but it varies from three to five. Most birds start incubation only when the clutch is finished. This allows all the eggs to hatch at approximately the same time. Once incubation begins, one or both parents spend most of their time on the eggs, turning them off and to keep developing embryos from adhering to the shell's inner lining. Parent birds can and do leave the eggs periodically to feed and stretch, though when incubation duties are shared, an unattended nest would be unusual. Some larger birds like barn owls, egrets, or herons start incubating with the first egg and then add to the nest every few days. This creates a staggered age class where some nestlings are large and some are small. And it invites trouble since older siblings in some cases kill the younger, push them out of the nest, or simply require so much food that the younger suffer or die of starvation. Incubation lasts from 12 to 24 days and is usually species specific within a day or so. The nestling phase generally takes another couple of weeks before the young birds can fly. Nests get quite crowded when four or five fledglings are full sized before leaving the nest. And the feeding schedule for this crew keeps both parents busy full time. Sometimes there is remarkable cooperation among parents when feeding young. When a male scissor tail realized his grasshopper meal was too big for his day old nestlings, his mate arrived to help pull the food apart. Once the nest successfully empties, both parents may help feed and teach their youngsters to hunt, or the male may assume these duties while the female starts a second brood in a new nest nearby. Nests are not reused in order to escape bird mites or disease that might build up or be present. Protection from direct sunlight can be critical when nestlings are young and naked. Young birds easily die from sun exposure on a hot day. Parent birds usually select nest sites that are well shaded, but when direct light occurs, they physically shade their young. That can make for some hot duty in its own right. Colony nesting birds can create their own shade problems when they're too congested. Prime spot nesters can be present in such large numbers that their own waste and concentrated ammonia waste products kill all leaves to expose nests to open sunlight throughout the season. In this case, the less fortunate parents forced to take peripheral nesting sites may be the lucky ones since their nests remain in cool shade by unaffected trees. Some birds are fiercely protective of nesting territories. Mississippi kites are large raptors that readily attack human walkers who venture too close. This is a common summer problem since kites nest in parks and golf courses where human traffic is common. Most of this is a bluff. Seldom will any bird actually contact a passing human, but it's frightful when you're attacked from above at high speed. Diving almost always comes from behind when a person is not watching. Stopping the harassment is usually as simple as keeping eye contact with the defending bird. But not always. Some kites have been known to knock off a hat or even to bring blood when grazing the scalp. Again, 
this is quite rare. Even smaller birds may dare to defend their nests in this way. Bluebird males are sometimes quick to discourage human intruders, as are mockingbirds and blue jays. This defensive scissor tail drives off a pair of Canada geese. Catbirds are brazen, chattering fiercely while offering themselves just a few feet away in order to protect their young. Other birds decoy, taunting a predator just out of reach to lure it away from their babies. Fledging is a crucial time. Flight mistakes are common, sometimes resulting in death. Young birds are especially vulnerable to predators, cheeping loudly for food to announce their presence. House cats are known to kill as many as 3.7 billion birds each year in the United States, many of them during this crucial life stage. And a host of natural predators also takes a toll on young birds. Fledging occurs when sufficient plumage and strength is gained. Some grown nestlings, like bald eagles, may test their wings for several days before actually leaving the nest. Large nests and small broods provide room to do this. But in other nests, conditions are far too crowded. In fact, growth and crowding is a major factor in pushing these young birds out of their homes. Once they fly for the first time, they quickly gain confidence. If you place a fledgling bird back into its nest, it will not stay. Fledgling birds bring a whole new level of problems to the adults that feed them. Young birds scatter and are hard to keep track of. They cannot hunt for themselves, and for several days, the adults must not only provide round-the-clock food, they must find their young to do so. Feeding is actually a way the parents can help their young offspring to improve flight skills. By landing nearby with food and forcing the youngsters to fly to them, the young birds quickly gain proficiency. Young barred owls illustrate. At first, they get used to running and climbing over large limbs of their nest tree homes, using wings to help them balance. Parent birds bring prey to certain limbs that serve as feeding stations. But later, the parents shift these places and the owlets take wing to be first in line for a meal. Soon, the fledgling owls are flying throughout their nest trees and later into surrounding timber. Young birds soon learn to hunt on their own. Much of this is through simple observation. Parents use food to lure their youngsters into hunting situations. They still feed them on occasion as they whine and beg, but bringing the kids along on hunting forays helps the youngsters to see how it's done. Much of a young bird's hunting ability is instinctive. Thanks to abundant summer insect populations, the young birds quickly learn to find food on their own. Even raptors may take advantage of nutritious insects. This young great horned owl practices hunting skills by watching a meadow for grasshoppers. These agile prey teach strike and catch techniques, and if the bird misses, it can sometimes run them down on foot. Over and over, the owl flies up to try again, filling its crop during hot daylight hours when parent birds are hidden away in the shadows. And within days, the owl's coordination is sufficient to switch to small mammals that make up its normal diet. As summer winds down, family groups prepare for migration. Young birds fly constantly to get into shape for their first long trips. Many species form large feeding groups that travel and roost together prior to migration. 
Cliff swallows are a good example, moving from nursery areas to marshes and open waters where they catch hatching insects by the tons. Some species turn up in surprising places, like this large flock of purple martins that temporarily roosts each year in dense trees by a hospital parking lot in a large city. And finally, migration begins. Not all birds make these journeys. Those who live on nuts and seeds or warm-blooded prey brave cold weather to stay at home. But those needing open water or insect diets must travel to warmer climes. And their passage, sometimes a grand spectacle in itself, leaves the fields and skies empty of abundant summer bird life. Weather grows harsh and the sun retreats. The winter woods fall silent, lacking birdsong. But reminders live on, and someday when spring returns, the wonders of the nesting season will come again. <laughs>